All right, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. The name of the video is uh, AI Predicts World War III. Uh, this is coming from the channel uh, How to Survive. World War III, eh? It may be coming, potentially. Who knows, right? A 10 kiloton nuclear bomb detonates in the middle of New York City. 10 kiloton. One of the world's biggest pedestrian areas. The explosion generates a white flash brighter than the sun, momentarily blinding people for a 10 kilometer radius as far away as New Jersey. A wave of scorching heat and a giant fireball as hot as the sun reduces everyone within 30 meters to dust. Only stark silhouettes can be seen on the floor. Right. And, and we obviously have a history of that. I mean, if you remember the, well, none of us alive would remember such a thing. But um, if you go back actually to um, Nagasaki, Hiroshima, um, there were instances of people that were walking the streets. Uh, and the only thing that's left of them are basically a, a charred shadow. And it's the craziest thing in the world. So. Um, of course, this would happen basically on mass, or right? uh, the concrete would still be there to a certain extent, uh, depending on where it actually hit exactly. Um, but yeah, there will be shadows of people where they once were before they were vaporized, basically. Uh, that's super grim, I know, but it's, it feels true. Clear photographs of what seconds ago were people. Horrifying. And this dreadful scenario is just the beginning. Today, we're mapping out a realistic simulation of a modern nuclear war. Oh my Lord! Which nation would strike first? Hmm. How many billions of people would die? And what kind of society would emerge on the other side? Now, which nations would be able to bring the world to ashes? Well, this is all hypothetical, yeah, but there are a couple the of United them. States and Russia stand as the two nations right. with the most substantial nuclear arsenals. Both possess thousands of nuclear warheads, enough to cause widespread destruction on an unimaginable scale. And they've already been exchanging threats, sanctions, and ultimatums. Bad blood is an understatement. One week before the impending nuclear exchange, Panic ensues as global leaders appear unable to avert catastrophe. But then, the world's worst fear begins to materialize when the first use of a tactical nuclear weapon occurs, aimed at a Russian military target. There's an immediate loss of life and property near the strike zone. Wait, wait, wait. So, so AI thinks that we'll be the ones who do, who do it? <laughs> first, us. Oh, no. I mean, I guess depending on whoever is in a White House, I mean, that may be the, the you know, determining factor, I guess, right? But I personally don't think that we'll be the first ones to launch some type of nuclear attack. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, that's too much on our conscience, guess, at least. Um, think about this here. The, the, obviously, the, the obvious initial strike um, is incredibly damaging, but the actual damage comes right after it, right? Um, like the true scale of it all, right? That's a yeah, bro. I hope we would never do something like that, bro. I mean, I get it. We have them because other people have them, but not. But bro, do we need something like that? Right. We're talking millions upon millions upon millions of people, bro. And then obviously, depending on whichever way the, the wind is blowing at that time, yeah, things get crazy fast. Okay, we're talking a lot of sicknesses. We're talking a lot of like miscarrying. Um, oh my god, that's psychotic. Please, guys. No, no WW3, please. Specifically with nukes. Panic spreads. Head to a fallout shelter immediately. If shelter isn't accessible, go to the most protected and insulated area of your dwelling because this is just the beginning. <laughs> Russia, China, and Belarus are preparing a counterattack. US NATO allies are just as ready to push their red buttons. The fateful day arrives and the unthinkable occurs. Nuclear warheads rain down upon major cities, military installations, and key infrastructure. The initial strikes claim millions of lives in right. mere hours. The initial the strike. detonations trigger a series of cataclysmic events, including a powerful shockwave. Let's investigate how a shockwave affects people at varying distances from oh. the epicenter. 
Well, we've already seen what happens when you're within oh, one no. kilometer of the bomb blast. Right. The extreme heat causes the complete vaporization of everything within the blast radius. Think about it as being cremated instantly at a temperature of 300,000 degrees Celsius or more. I will say though, like the people who were who would have been initially, uh, let's say, uh, removed from the earth, right? Um, sorry to be so crass, but YouTube is you know, YouTube, right? But um, the people that were initially removed, um, I don't want to call them the luck. Well, let's just call them the luckiest ones, all right? Um, because they felt nothing. They felt nothing. They had life. And then within like a blink of a second, it was gone. The ones who are going to be suffering the most would be the ones who survived it. Right? Like specifically, if they were not prepared for it. Like if it happened uh, in a way where like you woke up one morning or you're, you're like sleeping in the bed, like you don't really know anything like this is actually going to happen, let's say. Because if it just hits you out of random, and you have nothing to actually like protect yourself from everything that comes from this after the aftermath of this. Nah. Yeah, you, you would have literally wished that you were closer to the blast. Five kilometers away, the shockwave is still devastating. Structures are flattened and fires rage uncontrollably. The force of the blast can cause severe injuries and fatalities. The intense heat scorches the earth causing third degree burns to humans. Survival Full body, is an third uphill degree. battle as the world crumbles around you. 10 kilometers from ground zero, the shockwave is still potent. Buildings are damaged and the blast carries a destructive force. At this distance, immediate danger lessens, but the impact is still deadly. The heat can still cause first and second degree burns. At 20 kilometers away, the shockwave has lost most of its initial power, but it's still dangerous. Buildings will experience structural damage, and the risk of injury still remains. The heat, while less intense, will still ignite fires. Survival here is more feasible, but your challenges are far from over. Okay, back to our timeline. Just Immediate survival. After the nuclear Immediate exchange, survival. Tens of millions of people are dead, and right. many more are injured. Entire cities have disappeared. There's nothing to do now but wait in a fallout shelter. Use a Geiger counter if you have one to monitor radiation levels and stay tuned to emergency broadcasts. Of course, the amount of destruction will depend on the size of the bombs. If you want more details, check out our video on the true scale of nuclear weapons and subscribe to our channel for more survival content. In the first week following the exchange, the world is gripped by shock and disbelief. Vast areas of Earth are shrouded in nuclear fallout, radiation, and relentless fires. These catastrophic effects have triggered secondary issues like a lack of food, clean water, and shelter. A silent killer emerges. Disease spurred on by unsanitary conditions. The death toll rises. Soot and ash from the nuclear explosions and the ensuing fires leads to a cloud that blocks the sunlight from reaching Earth's surface. This and guys, we actually have um, like a historical precedent. Uh, there was a volcanic winter, um, what, year 536, uh, where something like this happened. Uh, multiple volcanoes erupted. Uh, the ash from these volcanoes were so just crazy uh, that it blocked the sun for a year. Okay, uh, This is when there, there were plagues popping up out of, out of nowhere. Uh, plants were not growing successfully because, again, it was basically a cloudy day the entirety of that year. Uh, there were a lot of people that were removed from the earth that year. Um, it's considered, for the most part, uh, you know, one of the worst years in human history. Um, and it sounds like, to be honest, if, if enough of these were to go off, uh, at one time, uh, that's exactly what would happen, bro. Unsanitary conditions, yeah, plague, bro. They're gonna, it's gonna be all over the place. Absolutely. Like, what will survive? The plague-ridden mice and rats, right? Um, that have the uh, the plague, I guess, infected ticks or something like that, guys. This leads to a significant drop in temperature. Right. The Got colder that year. Plunged into a nuclear winter. 
The immediate consequences of this are felt with acute severity. Food and clean water become even more scarce. Communities huddle together in a desperate bid for warmth and sustenance. You need to ration your food supplies and continue to monitor the radiation. As the first month unfolds, the world remains a bleak, irradiated landscape. Scavengers venture into the ruins of once thriving cities, scavenging supplies and resources. It's the movie uh, Children of Men. The dire situation leads to further struggles for access to water, food and shelter. I think. The death toll continues its relentless rise, surpassing one billion souls mm -hmm. lost. The world finds itself in a relentless deep freeze. Survivors face an unyielding battle against extreme cold and dwindling supplies. As law and order break down, you'll need to form community alliances in order to provide mutual aid and protection of supplies. After the first year, makeshift governments begin to form, attempting to provide some semblance of stability. The death toll now? More than three billion. Society tries to come to terms with the reality of a world without modern conveniences, connectivity, or the comforting hum of technology. Renewable energy sources are explored to generate some meager warmth and limited electricity. Small communities continue trading resources and knowledge. Healthcare services tentatively begin to reemerge and getting a basic education becomes crucial for a new generation. Try to be an active member of your community by teaching the youth, growing plants in vertical gardens, and participating in reconstruction projects. At the five-year mark, the world has permanently changed. Surviving communities grow in size and number. Trade networks span larger areas, reconnecting isolated groups. Scientific collaboration aimed at solving the challenges of a post-apocalyptic world rekindles human hope. Traditional agriculture has evolved into controlled indoor farming, producing modest yields. Still, the death toll continues its relentless march. In certain Africa places. Four billion. Yeah. And new local warlords are on the rise. That is a fact. That, I think that would probably happen within the first couple of weeks, I would say, personally, right? Um, I'd give it three days without electricity and every country falls. That's it, right? Um, yeah, take electricity out of the picture uh, and a way to communicate with other people, long distances, everything falls, three days. The United States of America, specifically, three days. Uh, other places, much longer, because there are places on this planet who um, have been isolated by choice, right? Uh, those individuals are going to be the, the ones who are able to sustain themselves in a way that uh, the rest of the world is not going to be able to at all. So, yeah, I'd give the United States of America three days. Many species, including humans, still face the risk of extinction. While humanity's resilience is remarkable, the path to recovery is long and tiring. Let's hope this scenario remains firmly in the realm of fiction and that when the time comes, the world chooses peace over destruction. Right. How do you think you'd fare in a nuclear hmm. apocalypse? All right, here he goes. Um, I am pretty much a prepper, right? Um, <laughs> basically, I'm pretty much a prepper. I, I generally keep roughly about, uh, let's say, 200 to 250 gallons of gas stored. Um, I exclusively drive Jeeps. Um, they're all lifted. Uh, I have a, you know, a trailer that's basically a, uh, a go bag on wheels for the most part. Um, enclosed trailer, 6x12, uh, TI, um, twin axles, right? Um, and then uh, six, uh, six and a half, um, sorry, 6.3 feet tall on the internals um, with a, a 2,000 pound weight rated uh, back door. Like I, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I basically am, you know, ready for this to happen anyway. Um, I don't know why, uh, but that's kind of me, right? Um, I guess I have, everyone has their quirks, okay? Uh, along with my trailer, I have uh, two 400 watt uh, solar panels on the top, along with uh, um, two jackeries that are basically powered uh, by the solar panels. I have 
mobile electricity anywhere I go. Uh, inside of it also has a, um, um, a, a queen bed on two like e-track rails on each side that could be kind of mounted, um, lifted off the bed basically so I can store things Then I can lift the bed and lay it flat onto the actual tracks of themselves. Like, yeah, I mean, I just, hmm, how would I fare? I think I would fare pretty well. My, like my household, I think so. I think we would fare pretty well. Um, but we would just need to get away from um, uh, people for the most part immediately. Um, enough bullets to last a, a pretty long time, AR-15s, AK-47s, um, along with um, some, some AR pistols, some AK pistols, etc. Um, again, enough bullets. Um, but I think that um, personally, we would fare very well, but the average person um, doesn't think about things like that, right? Um, they're not like exclusively prepared for anything to happen. And the only reason why I got into kind of the concept of prepping was uh, my house was basically obliterated by a tornado last year. <clears throat> right? And um, I was out of electricity, out of gas, uh, out of water um, for about seven days okay? uh, with no roof on the house, uh, no windows. <laughs> you get what I'm saying here. It was a little, a little bit crazy, right? Um, we stayed in a hotel uh, for the most part, but um, my, my house was completely wrecked. So, um, and that's basically what made me specifically get into kind of caring about, um, if things go left real fast, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Just be prepared, right? All right. USB camping lights. I plug into my, um, like my, I think it's like 2000 kilowatts or something like that. Jackery, but again, it's, it's powered. It, it gets repowered or recharged probably apologies it's recharged by the the solar panels that are on the roof of the um, my go trailer basically <laughs> um but yeah i think uh i think personally i'll be good right my family will be good i hope you guys are good too be prepared for things like this all right it's important bro it is incredibly important at least but all right listen guys let me know in the comments how, how would you how would you and your household fare in a situation like this because seriously Hopefully well. I'll catch you guys later. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out. <laughs>